Hey guys, I'm going to talk about why it's okay to store your JWT tokens on the client side and how your users of your programs cannot actually change or mess up the JWT token itself. So right here I have the JWT IO website to show how this works. Now here's a token right here and you can see it's color coded. Um, this bit goes to the header, this bit goes to the payload, and this bit to the signature. And you'll notice it also tell you whether a token is valid or invalid. Um, so I can you know add some stuff to the end and it invalidates it. Now also you'll notice right here it has the signature. So this is the secret that you're using to encode the token. So if I change the secret, you'll notice it goes invalid. Um, and then to the right over here, I just have a single J, a simple JWT token uh, library or JWT library in Python. So this allows you to create tokens. And you can see I create a token right here. Um, this is Python, um, where I said the admin is false, and then my secret is right here. So if I type token, we can see that's my token. And I can copy this, and I can bring it over here, and we paste it in. And we can see the admin is false. And now I use the same secret here that I used here. So it's it's still verified, it's still okay. Now, as a user, as you don't want your users to be able to change this payload value, and they actually can't. Because, as you can see, we're storing whether they're an admin in this, so we don't want them to be able to say they are, you know, are an admin when they're really not, and just basically grant themselves free access. And what's nice about JWT tokens is they actually can't. And here's why. So this bit is corresponding to the payload. So I can like change what goes here and the payload changes. But you notice as soon as I change that letter, I put it back, we're blue, we're all verified. But I try changing one of these letters, the whole thing invalidates. So I know the token has been tampered with. And so I can check that to see if it's been messed up. And if it has, I don't trust it, right? So they can't mess with this part. And the only other thing they can do is create a whole new token. Um, and you also notice like it just messes up the payload too. You can't just easily change this to false. They could try creating a whole new payload, um, a whole new token. Um, so they could go over here and they could say true to give themselves access. But the thing is they need to know what your secret is. So if my secret is Bob and I run this and get my token, and copy it and get rid of that. Um, they don't know what to put for the value of this. They might think it's Ron or Tim. Whatever they use for the token, it's always going to be invalid. They're going to have to know I signed this with Bob. Now, if they know what my secret is, they can create any type of JWC token they want. That's why it's very important to use whatever secret you use for making your JWC tokens. Don't share that because anyone can create whatever token they want after that. But as long as they don't have access to that, they can't really manipulate this token without messing it up, right? Everything gets screwed up if they try to change it. Um, and without that secret, they you're going to just see it's invalid when you check the token. So you're fine. So there's no real hazard in showing the client their token or, um, you know, they can mess with the token, but they're going to mess themselves up and they can't really give themselves access with the token. Um, unless they know your secret. So that's it for this video guys. I'll see you in the next one.